la 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 hello how are you oh. Oh, hi everyone. This is Grandma C. I'm so glad you came in. I was just testing out my flesh. I'm really glad God didn't put bark on my face. You know, that would be really hard to talk if my skin were bark. But I have flesh. I have skin and muscle. Yeah, I'm glad I'm human. I've got flesh. That's really nice. Well, I've got some questions up my sleeve for you guys. So the first thing I want to ask you is, if you would like to keep track of points, go get a pencil and get some paper because I'll be asking questions and you can keep track of those points. And I want you to send me the points that you have and I'll keep track of them. That would be a lot of fun. Okay, while you're going to get that, I'm going to sing a song with the younger kids or whoever is not getting a pencil. And if you are on your way, just sing it with me. Fully God, fully man. That's the truth we must understand. Son of God, Son of Man, Jesus came God's rescue plan. Fully God and fully man will heal the sick and forgave their sin, call the people to follow him. To some he was king, to some he was mad, but they all ask, who is this man? Fully God, fully man. That's the truth we must understand. Son of God, Son of Man, Jesus came God's rescue plan. Fully God and fully man. Okay, well, I'd say everyone's got their paper and pencils ready. So here we go with the first order of business. I asked you, a riddle, and I did not give you the name of that riddle. If you caught that last time, raise your hand. Oh, good, good. Some of you did, and some of you didn't. Well, I want to give that riddle to you, but before I do, I have to clarify the riddle. How was John like a penny? Well, there's two Johns. There's John the writer who wrote the book of John, and then there's John the baptizer who baptized people in water. So you got to clarify. I'm talking about John the baptizer, John the Baptist. How is he like a penny? Well, he was one sent from God. That's how. Okay, now these questions are for points. Number one, what is your beginning day? What do you call it and how do you celebrate it? What is your beginning day? My beginning day is June 23rd. Okay. I want you to say out loud, your beginning day is your birthday. If you got it, you got a point. Question number two. Who is the in the beginning God who was made flesh? Who is the in the beginning God who was made flesh? Do you have that answer? Okay, he was. If you said Christ, you're right. You get a point. Number three. What holiday do we celebrate to remember when the Word became flesh? What holiday do we celebrate? This is harder. And the answer is, if you said Christmas, you're right. You've got a point. Number four, what is the name for Jesus in John 1.1? In the beginning was the In the beginning was the word. If you said word, you're right. That was the name for Jesus in John 1:1. 1, 1. And the last question, there's three possible answers. If you get any one of them, you can have a point. If you get all three, you get two bonus points. So here it is. Who were the three people that God promised the nation of Israel? that he would send to them. There were three. One name starts with M, one name starts with P-R, one name starts with E. If you can get one of them, you could have this point and the other two could be a bonus. So the one that starts with M is Messiah. The one that starts with P-R is Prophet. And the one that starts with E is Elijah. Okay, write your points down and send them to me. I'd really like to know. Okay, well, I think we're ready to get into our story. 
Before we begin our story, I have a word that I want to look up in this Bible dictionary. R-A-B-B-I. Rabbi. Say, let's say that. Rabbi. Let's say it three times really fast. Rabbi, rabbi, rabbi. Rabbi, rabbi, rabbi. Okay, that's kind of a tongue twister. Well, what does it mean? Do you know if someone called you a rabbi, would you be offended? Well, let's look up and see what it means. In this Bible dictionary, it says, Rabbi is a title, it's a name for someone, meaning my master, and it's applied to teachers who are honored. During the New Testament period, it came to be applied to someone who really knew the law of Moses. So if you called someone a rabbi, you were saying they were honored and that they really knew the law of Moses. Well, let's go back to the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. And if you know what book I'm going to, that's Genesis. And here we are in Genesis chapter 1. And let's see. Hmm. That's our whistle. I hope you heard it. I want everyone sitting up as straight as they can because I'm getting ready to read a verse out of the Bible. Before I read it, I want you to put your imaginations on, and I want you to think about this verse. Genesis 1:11. It's day four, by the way. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed. Wouldn't you like to have been there on day four? Just imagine what was going on. You had just plain old dirt, and then all of a sudden, vegetation starts to sprout. There's a tree. Oh, there's some bushes. Oh, that bush has blueberries on it. Flowers, flowers yellow, red, pink, orange. Wow, wouldn't you have liked to be there on day four? The day four of creation, the whole chapter one would be so exciting. Chapter two is pretty good, too. If I turn to chapter two, I like that chapter because that tells how woman was made. We're kind of special. So man and woman, they're given some special treatment in chapter two. Oh, chapter three. I would really rather not read chapter three. Chapter 3 talks about the man and the woman that God made, and they made a fist, and they shook it in God's face, and they said, no, we are going to make our own laws. We want to eat of the tree. We're going to eat of the tree. We make the rules, and they did. They broke God's law, and God had told them there would be a punishment. Do you ever wonder where death came from because everybody dies? Death came from chapter 3 in Genesis. That was the punishment for sin. Adam and Eve were going to die. I don't know if I really want to read the rest of this book. It sounds kind of depressing to me. Wait, wait. Verse 15 of chapter 3. There's a whisper, just a whisper of some hope. God is telling them he's going to send them a rescuer. That's what man needs is a rescuer. And God promises he's going to send a rescuer. Oh, and he gives a clue. This rescuer is going to be a man. He's a human male. That's all we know. A tiny little clue. I can't really tell what the picture's going to be. But, well, maybe if I keep reading, I'll find more clues. Let's see if that's true. Well, I'm going to flip on over. Oh, look here. In Genesis 12, there's another clue. This human, this man, he is going to be a Jew. Clue two. Wow. Let's put that on. I still can't tell what the picture is, but let's keep going. There's a rescuer coming. He's going to be a man. He's going to be a Jew. Let's see. Oh, look, right here at the end of Genesis. Here's another clue, the third clue. This man that's a Jew is going to be from the tribe of Judah. Do you all remember how many tribes there were in the nation of Israel? Well, let's see if you can count. That's how many. Did you get it? 
10 plus 2, 12. Yes, if you got that, you can put a point down. There were 12 tribes in the nation of Israel, and God picked one of those tribes, the tribe of Judah. So now we know the rescuer is going to come from the tribe of Judah. This is getting really exciting. Well, let's do some more looking. Let's see if I can find another clue. Oh, 2 Samuel 7. Hey, here's a really important clue. This clue says that he's going to be from the family of David, and he's going to be a king, like David was a king. This, this rescuer is going to be human. He's going to be a Jew. He's going to be from the tribe of Judah, from the family of David, and he's going to be a king. This is getting so exciting. Oh, I just, I'm skipping over lots of clues because we don't have time to read them all. I hope someday you'll take time to read them all. Oh, in Psalms, another clue and another clue. There's lots of clues in Psalms, but I'm not going to stop there because I wonder if the prophets have a clue. Let's go to the major prophet, Daniel. Let's see if he has a clue. <gasps> a big clue. A really big clue. Daniel 9 tells us the name they're going to call the rescuer. It starts with the M, the Messiah. Daniel 9 tells us he will be the Messiah. And it tells us when he was going to be born. Not the exact day and year, but very close that those who were looking and figuring it out could have figured out close to the time that he was going to be born. This is a really important clue. So do you guys see the picture? Now I've been showing you all the puzzle pieces. Can you tell what the picture is? Well, I can, because I've got the picture of the puzzle right here. Oh, you, you can't tell what the picture is from the clues that I'm giving you? Well, let's just keep going. Maybe it will clear up. Let's see. I wonder if there's a minor prophet that has a clue. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of them, a lot of them. But I'm going to stop at Micah 5, too. Ooh, this is a really good clue. This clue tells us the city that the Messiah is going to be born in. I wonder if some of you know this. This is a chance for a point. If you know the city that the Messiah was born in, it starts with B. The city's name is Bethlehem. Give yourself a point if you got it right. Wow, we know so much about the Messiah, but there's so much more that we have to learn. And you know, the picture's not super, super clear, even though the last book in the Bible, Malachi, gives another clue about the Messiah. The picture's just not very clear. We really can't tell. I can tell because I'm looking at the whole picture put together. But when I look at the puzzle pieces, I just can't tell. That's how it felt to live in the Old Testament times. All the clues about the Messiah didn't really make sense. You could kind of tell he's going to be a king, but okay, I, I don't quite have it all put together. There's one more kind of clue that I want to tell you about. It's different than all the rest. So this clue is in Leviticus. Oh. It says, look for the lamb. How can that be a clue about the rescuer? Lambs don't rescue. Look for the lamb. Look for for the lamb. Look. Oh! oh! Why, there's a lamb right there! Bah, bah, bah. Oh, sweet little lamb. How can you tell me about the Messiah? This doesn't seem to help me any. I'm wondering. Bah. Oh, you are so precious. How could a lamb tell me about the Messiah? God spoke to Israel, bring me a sacrifice, morning and evening, every day. Offer a spotless lamb without a blemish. This is my command, you must obey. 
oh, I think I'm getting it. They were supposed to offer a lamb every morning and every evening in their place. In other words, this lamb, I would give him to the priest, and he would be killed for me. Oh, precious lamb, I don't want you to have to die for me. That doesn't seem right. You haven't done anything wrong. You're so gentle and, and kind. I don't want you to die for me. I guess God is trying to tell me that sin is really, really bad. That someone has to die when there's sin. And the lambs just have to be killed every morning and every evening and even more. There were lambs at the Passover. More and more lambs had to die and be killed because a lamb really can't take away our sin. It can just cover it temporarily. Oh, sweet lamb. I'm glad I don't live in the Old Testament. But now wait a minute. This is very confusing, very confusing. I thought the Messiah was going to be a king. Crowns don't fit on lambs very well. I, this does not make any sense. Can you see why the Old Testament Christians could be a little bit confused? Well, I do too. But as we go along in the book of John, we'll find out the answer. So let's go right there. Let's go to John chapter 1, the end of John chapter 1, and let's take up our story where we left it off. Okay. Everyone sit up really, really straight. I'm going to be reading a verse out of God's Word. I want you to turn your imaginations on and see this because it really happened because God said it, not because I said it, but because it comes right out of the Word of God. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Are you putting this into your mind as a story? Let's go there. The next day. The next day after what? <gasps> the next day after the delegation came from the Pharisees. The priests and the Levites, they came to ask John, who are you? Because large crowds were coming to see him. And remember, he told them, I'm not the Messiah, but the Messiah is alive right now. Well, the very next day, John was standing there and the Messiah started walking toward him. And he said, look, everyone, look. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he that I've been talking about. He was born after me. He's younger than I am. But he's very much more important than I am. Because actually, he existed before I existed. He's the one that I told you I'm not even worthy to touch his shoe. This is him. This is him. And I didn't know who he was, but the one that sent me to baptize with water said that he was sending me to reveal the Messiah to Israel. I didn't know who he was. But that one, God, told me that when I saw the Spirit come down out of heaven like a dove and land on someone and remain on that person, that would be the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, Messiah is Hebrew, and it, in Greek, it is Christ. Messiah in the Old Testament, Christ in the New Testament. Well, what does that mean in English? It means the anointed one or the chosen one. So John the Baptist saw God anoint Jesus with the Holy Spirit, and it remained on Jesus. And when John saw that, he knew that was the sign. This is the Messiah. And John says right here in John chapter 1, instead of straight, these are God's words. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. Well, the next day, John was standing there with two of his disciples. Now, these disciples were John's disciples, John the baptizer's disciples, because they believed that John had been sent from God, and he had. And they listened to all the words that he said, and they believed them, and they were baptized. 
Well, John looked up that day, and he saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And so these two disciples started following the Lamb of God, the Messiah, and John was happy for them to go. I wonder what they were thinking as they followed him. Do you think we'll have a chance to talk to him? I've got some questions I'd like to ask. I wonder if he'd let us spend a little time with him, maybe. Well, just then, Jesus turned around and saw them following him, and he said, what are you looking for? And they said, uh, uh, where, where are you staying? And he said, come and see. So they went with him. It was about 4 o'clock when they started to go with him, and they stayed till supper, and they stayed till bedtime, and they stayed all night. And we don't have any verses about what they talked about, but we know what they talked about. Because when Andrew left, he ran to find his brother. Simon, Simon, you got to come. We found the Messiah who is called the Christ. We found him. you got to come. And Andrew brought his brother, Simon, to the Messiah. When Jesus saw Peter, he said to him, You are Simon, son of John. You are going to be called Cephas or Peter. I wonder what Peter thought. Who is this man that just told me my name was going to change? He knows who I am now, and he knows who I'm going to be. Who is he? Well, the next day, Jesus decided that he is going to go find someone to be a follower of him. And he finds someone named Philip. We don't have a clue where he found him, how long they talked, what they talked about. But the next thing we know, Philip is running. He's running to tell his friend Nathaniel, we found him. We found him. We found the one that the whole Old Testament is written about. You know who Moses wrote about and all the prophets? We found him. Um, and, and his name is Jesus. His dad's name is Joseph. His, and, and he lives in, in Nazareth. Nazareth, said Nathaniel. Nazareth, that dinky little town. No important person has ever come from Nazareth. You mark my words. Well, why don't you come and see, said Philip to Nathaniel. And so Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus. When Jesus looked up, before he even met Nathaniel, he called out, Behold, look, now there's an Israelite that likes to tell it like it is. And Nathaniel said, how, how do you know me? Well, said Jesus, I saw you when... You were sitting under the fig tree before Philip called you. I, I, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus said, do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And so will we as we study the book of John. Because Jesus is fully God and fully man. That's the truth that we're going to learn and understand. I'd like to close with a song that I sang about the lamb. So if you'll start with me, we're going to count to four twice. And then you just jump in with me. I think you've been learning this in Sunday school. Three, four. One, two, three, four. God spoke to Israel, bring me a sacrifice, morning and evening, every day. Offer a spotless lamb without a blemish, this is my command, you must obey. Sing hallelujah, praise to Jehovah, worship the God of Abraham. Sing hallelujah, praise to Jehovah. Oh, stop! I can't sing the rest of that song. That's for another day. Goodbye.